Hello and welcome to part two of my rock uh, creation series. And in this video, I'm going to take a look at ZBrush. Now, ZBrush is uh, really, really useful for creating organic and uh, environmental stuff uh, like rocks. So um, first off, uh, what you want to do is to select Dynamesh 128. And I would suggest you make a few tests, uh, quite a lot of tests to begin with, just to get the practice. Uh, to begin with, I want to press X to turn off symmetry. And I also like to press Shift P to turn off the grid. Uh, you can also do it by pressing uh, this button out here. And press X again. Um, if you click this button down here or press Shift P, uh, F um, to toggle it on and off, you can see we don't have uh, too much uh, detail um, on this right now. So, um, God damn it. Um, so it looks like this when I paint, and if we zoom in a little bit, you can see it's it's kind of a jagged already. Um, so it, you know, if we want to get more the uh, more geometry to work with, which we want. Um, we can press Ctrl D to subdivide. The subdivision level can be found uh, under geometry here. Um, right now it's at subdivision level 2, so pressing Ctrl D again is going to divide it again. And every time we do it, the active points and active polygons is going to increase. So um, I tend to do it few times like four subdivisions maybe more depending on how much i want so 2.8 isn't that bad it sounds like quite a lot but uh, and you can see it's fairly okay maybe starting to lag a little bit but uh, it's acceptable and um, i had a few ones at six million and i believe people with stronger computers work in even higher uh, numbers um, but anyway, since I have Dynamesh on, and if you don't know what Dynamesh is, it's, uh, I would suggest you go look at what it, what it does. But it's, it's generally a, a way of um, uh, getting some of this um, topology uh, evened out again if you end up getting things stretched, which you might end up. And I'm going to be showing this uh, briefly. Um, I'm going to undo the last subdivision head, otherwise it's going to take too long. Um, so I'm going to keep it at two, uh, 700. And if I uh, just start to move around, uh, you can see we can paint stuff here. But that's not uh, generally what I start to do. So um, I'm going to be using mainly this one called Trim Smooth Border. And if you d can't find it under brushes here, you can find it in the light box under brush and under trim. And it's the bottom one here. So apparently it's been moved down there, uh, but I think this is by far the best tool for creating rocks. Um, just be aware that every time you shut down ZBrush, it's going to disappear from this folder unless you copy it into the startup folder. So I'm also going to show you where that is briefly. So uh, you can find it uh, where you have ZBrush installed. So for me, it's on the program files here and uh, pixel logic, ZBrush. And under ZBrushes, you have all these, which is uh, the same as you can see here. So under trim, you can see trim smooth border. So you want to copy this file here and go back to the root of the installation folder and go into um, C startup and brush presets and just paste it in here. So I have it already, so I'm not going to do it again. Um, but anyway, this is by far the best tool I found, as mentioned. Um, get away. Um, and also, one other thing you want to do is to use a square alpha. I'm not going to explain what an alpha is. Uh, you can find plenty of videos out there um, which explains this better than I am uh, going to be doing. Uh, but I might touch down on it later on. But for now, just make sure you press this one and select this one called alpha 28 or just look for something which looks square. Uh, Alpha 28 is the one. Um, so once you start painting with this, you will notice that it's kind of um, picking up. Once you click it, it's going to pick up a normal or uh, the direction of that point that you um, 
you initially click and then when you move around it's going to keep that um, that um, direction or um, yeah and uh, once you move outside uh, to the, uh, the the center of it you can see once I move closer to the edge here it's gonna start to pick up the uh, the level uh, so it's gonna be carving in um, towards this point here um, so it's very useful for carving in uh, holes like that for example um, so that's actually what I tend to do to begin with uh, because I want to establish some kind of uh, general form and I use that uh, do that using a pretty big brush so actually just by moving around it like this in a kind of sporadic way just to get something which I uh, think could be useful uh, as a beginning um, um, form or uh, yeah as a rock I don't pay too much attention to weird things like things sticking out at this point uh, if I have an idea uh, of some particular form I, I want I do this a little bit more thoroughly but uh, I've actually had pretty interesting results just doing what I do right now just uh, getting something um, out of this so I don't want this to be too square or too um, like, uh, looking too much like a cube um, so but and I don't want to put too much effort in um, making it look like a rock at this point just looking for some kind of interesting um, form so something that goes in somewhere and down some other places uh, if you know what I mean in, in a general um, uh, way and as you can see I'm using my mouse constantly and it's uh, it ended up uh, driving me crazy actually so in another video I will uh, show how I uh, use my Wacom tablet uh, which I purchased entirely just for, for making rocks actually uh, but it's uh, I think it's gonna be worth it if you plan on doing something like this it's, it's definitely something I enjoy doing now and uh, let's see I don't know this does not look like a rock I uh, agree with you if you're thinking what the fuck is he doing um, and that's perfectly okay so at this point uh, we have a dynamic resolution of 128 and just for now since this is just a rock I'm gonna set this fairly high to like 500 and then redynamize and do that by pressing in the open area holding down control and dragging down so now we can see we have 480,000 polygons so um, now we have this form here and you will eventually get some oddities like that if you don't pay good attention um, and you might have want to not uh, do exactly as I do so um, <clears throat> I'm gonna switch a slightly uh, smaller brush and then I like to smooth these weirdities out uh, so it's not uh, I don't have any holes and stuff like that or spikes and so on um, and it interesting part of this process working this way is that uh, it actually sometimes end up creating some interesting uh, um, forms uh, along the way which I maybe didn't in intentionally uh, wanted but um, which uh, kind of you know uh, can be inspiring to okay this might look good you know and um, you see for example at, at that point I wanted to get rid of that and I actually created something looking pretty kind of rocky so uh, that's a kind of nice uh, thing and maybe we get something over here because it draw, drew my attention to that area here so um, and you will see these stretching things uh, here and there um, they are kind of some something that you will have to live with in the beginning at this stage here so uh, this area here looks pretty screwed up uh, so I'm probably gonna have to carve it all down um, use the smooth uh, over the area and 
just accept that it kind of screwed up. Um, try to even it out a little bit more. So this is going to require another redynamish. So uh, let's do it again. We dynamish. And I need to do it again, I can see already. <laughs> uh, it's great. Uh, okay. So um, let's see. Yeah, it's a mess in here. Okay. Um we done mess again. So this is maybe actually a good good reason because people generally say it work on the lowest uh, resolution uh, uh, subdivision level as you can until you can't do anything more and then subdivide and subdivide and subdivide. And that may hold true also even for rocks in this case, it appears, because uh, this kind of sucks to redynamize at this high uh, polygon level. Um, but anyway, um, we're just going to work with what we have now. Um, so, uh, at this stage, I, um, I would start to get, a, get rid of all the, um, the pointy... Um, non rocky looking areas just by I'm constantly using the trim smooth border you can see just chopping away pieces and be sure to use the uh, control C um, whenever you see something that doesn't end up looking good maybe you end up doing something uh, you don't can't really uh, get, take back for example maybe I didn't want this one just use control C uh, I use it constantly um, and you will also notice that uh, when you work in areas like here, for example, and you want to maybe cut this out a little bit to make it more uh, etched, you might get uh, effect uh, effect the area next to. So what you can do is you can hold uh, Alt in, and then on the other side, paint it back in. That is going to affect that area up here, and you can <laughs> do. Do another pass and then carve it back again. It's kind of the only way I found uh, found out to do this. It sucks a little bit sometimes, but then again, uh, sometimes you get something looking pretty interesting. So just uh, know that this is can be uh, pretty uh, uh, frustrating at times. Um, but yeah, um, at this point, I would. Generally, just walk around this. Uh, this um, I didn't have any planes with this. Actually, just uh, talking and clicking uh, around, and you know, trying to create some randomness around here. And I don't want to spend too much time on details because uh, on these kind of details, because um, um, once there's going to be textures on and so on, it's not going to be that visible. And all the tutorials, I, almost all the tutorials I've seen, uh, people spend a lot of time on, on trying to make things look pretty finished at this point. And I'm not going to be doing that because, uh, frankly, I got actually some pretty good rocks out of just uh, making some kind of random stuff uh, and then adding some other stuff uh, on top of it uh, afterwards. So, um, yeah, that's why I'm not going to be spending too much time on, the, on this. Uh, so I'm just going to put this little crumpled piece of, of thingy uh, at this point here. And I'm actually going to end the video here and work a little bit more on it. Uh, and then uh, see you in the next video. So uh, I don't bore you to death with this. But I hope, hopefully you picked up some of the techniques uh, along this uh, video. So um, see you in the next. And bye.